Are you looking for a career change? Tenable Network Security is hiring. Everything from programmers to researchers. Check out all of the available positions at securityweekly.com forward slash tenable jobs. If you're listening to this show, check out the following two positions. Both are technical and both are work from home. Nessus Vulnerability Researcher and C Software Engineer. Again, that's securityweekly.com forward slash tenable jobs. Michael Santar Cangelo, myself, and John Strand are doing a webcast series coming up titled Cracking the Code How to Become Security, How Security Nerds Become Security Leaders. Part, uh, part one is titled From Penetration Testing Results to Improvement. It will be held on June 10th, 2015, at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. You can get all the details, including the registration link at securityweekly.com forward slash cracking the code. Welcome back, everyone. We're joined by, of course, Larry and Joff. Let me see. I want to make sure I, I introduce you to that. Okay, yeah, cool. Sorry Good. about that. Uh, yeah, Larry and Joff are still here. People. And a uh, very special guest for this segment is Sean Mitchell. Sean, what is your exact title at, at Tenable? So I am the, uh, the Director of Talent Acquisition here at Tenable Network Security. Excellent. And I hear that Tenable is hiring lots of people. Yes, that is an understatement. We are uh, in the midst of... Uh, a, a a massive growth uh, spurt here at, at Tenable. We have been for the past uh, two years, uh, and I expect that that growth to continue on through probably 2016, 2017. How many open positions do you think we have at Tenable right now, Sean? Last time, well, let's see. I did the report today, so we have 125 open wow. positions. Wow! Damn! Wow! That's a lot. Of, that's, that's a big spurt. <laughs> it is. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Um, now, for our listeners, uh, of course, there's lots. Of, there's sales positions on there, and all different positions. But there's a lot of technical research positions on there as well. Absolutely, and you know, in in terms of what the marketplace is today, technical positions are some of the hardest to find globally. And uh, so, it's no surprise that we have quite a few of them open. Um, but we're also growing our our product team, our development teams. Um, mm -hmm. You know. To, to support the, the growth that we have for Security Center and Nessus. You sound, you sound like depressed, like we have these open and I haven't been able to fill them yet. And like Security Weekly just really need to help Sean out and Tenable and, you know, myself and, and Carlos. And, you know, we work for Tenable. Help us out, man. Come apply for some jobs. So That's right. Any help we can get finding <laughs> that good quality uh, talent out there, we'll take. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now, Sean, well, some of the listeners have written in, and this is a pretty common question that we get from our listeners. And they say, you know, I'm currently a programmer. I really don't do much in terms of, like, working in security. Or I'm a systems administrator or network administrator. They don't have security in their job title. But they're like, you know, I'm kind of, like, I need a change. And I want to break into security. Well, what's some advice that you have for someone in that, um, in that position? Yeah, so, so I think in, in many cases when you have you know, developers or sysadmins, um, and, you know, we'll, we'll focus on sysadmins for a minute here. Uh, you know, they, their title may not scream security engineer or anything like that, but there are components of their jobs on a daily basis that deal with security. Um, so I think, if, I think my, my advice to anyone that's interested in, in our space, the security space, is to really look at um, what the job entails. Because many times it's, for a developer, you need to know, you know C languages or C++ languages or Python or PHP. Um, in many cases, it doesn't matter that you're not in security, but you understand the concepts of what the security space does. Um, and you have to bring those to light. We, we've had a, a number of times where you know, we've hired developers or engineers that have had no security experience, but they have an interest. Mm. So they have a lab in the basement of Paul Asadorian's house, and they go in there. I, I have a lab in the basement of Paul Asadorian's exactly. house. He just doesn't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or, you know, they, they express some interest, and, they, and they, you know, they're, they're playing around in the lab, and they create an app, uh, you know, GitHub. Uh, mm -hmm. Or something on you know an open source app um, that shows exp you know expresses an interest. Those are easy ways to get into the business. Um, but here you know if I if I look at Tenable, our developers you don't necessarily have to have a, a background in security. You absolutely have to have an interest in what we do. <clears throat> right. 
No, for sure. And, and I, think, I, I think that's some sage advice, Sean. Yeah. I've always told people, <clears throat> have a lab, get involved in or create an open source project. Probably the top, one of the you know, top two things that you could do to break yep. into the space. Yep. Yeah, because, cause you, because you never know. When, you know. If you have an open source, um, you know, with all the, all the networking tools that we have out there in recruiting and, and also just in, for, for professionals, um, you know, our VP of engineering could come across your app and be mm -hmm. looking at it and, you know, maybe type a few, you know, inquiries about it. And before you know it, you're talking about a, hey, any interest in coming work at Tenable Network Security? Mm. Sure. I mean, it happens that easily. And it's happened before. Yeah, I was going to say, we've, we've hired people. I know we've hired people that in that same exact scenario. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what, do you look for any particular certifications or have advice for people on certifications, Sean? Yeah, certifications is one of those hot, hot topics, right? Um, I think in certain industries, it, it really makes sense to have a certification. Uh, in others, maybe not so. Um, I think we straddle the fence here at Tenable in terms of, uh, in terms of um, you know, um, the certifications. Um, it's great that our sales engineers, which we have, you know, 20 openings for sales engineers mm -hmm. across, the, across the country, um, to have a CISSP, all right, because our sales engineers are highly technical, and it's great to have that. But does our, you know, sysadmin working in house need a CISSP or or those types of things? Do our do our um, research engineers need that? Not really. Sometimes they don't, um, and sometimes you know certifications come out and they're they're great, but. They're yesterday's news as soon as you get it because mm -hmm. we're on to the next thing. The, the industry changes so fast that the certifications, they don't seem to keep up. But there are also industries that you absolutely have to have. You know, for example, if, if we're working with one of our customers and they're government-based and the requirements are, hey, you have to have a, have a you know, uh, some sort of uh, uh, networking or sysadmin certification. Then we need it. Then you have to have it because it's more of a requirement. Mm. So, so <coughs> sorry, Sean. Um, yep. So, do you, you do a lot of the initial screening, especially for a lot of the technical positions? Is that true? That's true. Yeah. So, what is when you first get on the phone with the person? What's the first thing, the number one thing you're looking for? Like, what are some initial signals you're looking for? Well, the first thing I always look for is is if they've applied or if they've expressed interest, that they actually know who we are, mm -hmm. okay? that you know who Tenable is, um, that the role that they've applied to, that they know what role they applied to. I know they seem kind of simple, but you'd be surprised. Uh, you know, people will just apply for a job just to apply for a job, and they don't do any research in them. <laughs> right. and, those, and, and, and nine times out of 10, you're moving on from those candidates. They could be great. But they just don't, you know, they're, 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 their approach is wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I look for things like, you know, in, in terms of we're, we're talking about technical help. Uh, I look for some of the projects they've worked on. I look for tenure. And I know tenure is always kind of a hot button in, in IT because they say the longest people stay at jobs nowadays is anywhere from 12 to 18 months before they're moving on to the next, the, the next role. Um, but I do look for tenure. Uh, I, I do look for... You know what the skills, what skills they have on their resumes. You know, technical resumes are interesting because you have, you know, a name, then you typically have an education, and then you have a, a list of all the technologies they they know. And um, you know, some people put hundreds of. I know every single language. I know every single <laughs> networking protocol. Mm -hmm. I, I I know all that. And you know, it's good to dive into that because do they know? Is an, is are they an expert in everything? Probably not. So I look at that. I look at their skill sets. I look at their 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 um, their education. Uh, I certainly look at what the projects that they're doing, um, because I think if you if you have a good resume in front of you, you can decipher really quickly whether you know are they just doing front end design type work, or are they really playing around and doing some heavy duty um, you know HTML coding uh, versus you know stuff on the front end. So um, that's what I look for, you know, right off the bat. Those are the things I'm looking for and how it correlates the, to, the, to the open position that we have. And so you're not just looking for someone 
with work experience, it's more about passion. And one of those things that shows passion is, uh, you know, some of the side projects they might take on, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, so you have the resume, but but that's not just it. I mean, if, if, we, if we did hiring just based off resumes, I don't think we'd have a problem here. I don't think we'd have 120 requisitions open right now. Mm. Um, but it's diving deep. And, and you only find out those side projects when you start talking to people and you express the general interest because – you know, good recruiters, and I have a, I have a bunch of them, um, Matt Duran, for example, and, and Lamont Price. These are guys that are on my team, um, you know, Bethany and, and Christy and, and Jamie. They're all great at really kind of peeling back that onion mm -hmm. and, and finding out what people are passionate about. If you have a good technologist on the phone or a good salesperson or a good marketing person or a good researcher and you start to kind of hit on what they're passionate about, you're either going to get the person that doesn't say two things, uh, you know, or they won't stop talking right. because you know you've hit a button right there. So that's what we, you know, that that's how you kind of approach, that's how I approach, and I think some of my, my, my teammates um, approach recruiting is the best is not saying, hey, how many years of experience do you have in C++? How many years of experience do you have in this? It's more of once you get into a conversation about some of the projects and understand what they do, that's when you get the best candidates. And that's when you get a lot of information that you probably normally would never, right, ever get. Right. You know? Um, so, Sean, and, are you um, – are you, oh, sorry. Were you going to say something, including what? I was saying, I was saying good and bad information. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not always on the positive side. <laughs> so, Sean, you're on the, the West Coast? Yes, that's correct. Are you, are you near Silicon Valley? Uh, about an hour and a half away. Okay. Now, yep. I, I, have you done some recruiting, you know, in the Silicon Valley area? Obviously, there's a big talent pool, but I yeah. kind of feel like the culture might be kind of different luring people that work in Silicon Valley today to come work for, you know, Tenable headquartered in Columbia, Maryland. Is that a, is that a challenge or? I, I think so. So I, I did do uh, some recruiting in, in the San Jose area before um, and San Francisco area before for companies I've worked uh, with in the past. And it's, it's interesting. The, the, the valley is, you know, it, you know, no pun intended, but there are, there are peaks and valleys to, to, to the industry out here, right? Um, you know, we've all been through the dot-com mm -hmm. boom and bust, right? And then and now we're in this, you know, we've got this, re-energized Silicon Valley where it's all about apps and, and, mm -hmm. and, and the latest and greatest. And, you know, VC money is flying everywhere out there. Um, you know, you have like the Airbnbs of the world that are getting 700 million, raising 700 million in a, in a heartbeat. Have you seen the show um, Silicon Valley? It is. Uh, have you seen the HBO TV show Silicon Valley? One of my favorites. Okay? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Completely inappropriate, but... Yeah, inappropriate, but I, I, is it pretty accurate that show? There are some things that are accurate yeah. about that. I mean, yeah. it, it's it's a, it, I mean, they're totally spoofing on some companies out there that that act like that. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it, it is it is a, a hyper competitive market out there, and <clears throat> but everything is in that area. Mm. You know, whether it's finding technical help or finding a house. Um, yeah. It's it's kind of a it's kind of a crazy time in in the valley right now, um, but I, I I don't you know I think there are there are challenges to to Silicon Valley in that there there are not a lot of people there you know the the, the talent pool is small so everyone is you know they, they seem to be uh, you know robbing the bank every every you know every every ten minutes you know they're trying to you know they got headhunters you got recruiters from other companies. Um, you know, no one's laying off. They're spending more money to keep people. Uh, there's tons of gimmicks and, and hmm. things of that nature, you know, that, that you can get from these companies, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, um, unlimited benefits and unlimited food and dry cleaning, all this stuff we kind of saw back in, you know, yeah. the dot com era. It's all kind of resurfacing. It's coming back, it's just, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just repackaged into something that looks a little cooler, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, do we have that same struggle in, in Columbia, Maryland? Um, sometimes, yeah. I mean, we, we're, we're not, you know, we're, we're, we don't have all the gimmicks and just shows out, in, in, you know, in Columbia or even in the Washington, D.C. metro area. Mm -hmm. um, I see that starting to pick up in our area. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, our challenge is geographically, it, it's it's tough. And, you know, we're, we're, you know, just south of Baltimore, and we are in Columbia, Maryland. But we do have the, the Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia area to pull from. Mm. Um, and that's why we're, we, you know, we tend to be uh, somewhat flexible um, with certain roles in terms of, hey, do you have to be in the office every single day? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, can this be a remote pis- position versus a position in the office every day? So, um, yeah, it's interesting. Know. I know some people uh, that live in the D.C., Baltimore area, um, they'll kind of do like a split time between coming in the office and, yep. and working from home kind of thing in certain positions, as you said. Yeah. And that's only because there are, you know, 500 million people on the streets, uh, you know, in the morning and in, yeah. in the evening. You know, Columbia, Maryland is a great place to live. I mean, it, the the whole area is a great place to live. It is. It is actually it's, nice. Uh, yeah. It's it's just a traffic, which which is uh, which is a challenge for anyone that lives there. So. Mm. Awesome. <laughs> so what's um, what's the job that uh, you really want to mention above and beyond the ones that I mentioned that you're looking to fill at Tenable? Oh boy, if I just pick one, you know what's going to happen tomorrow is uh, is every other hiring manager is going to call me and say, "Why didn't you mention my <laughs> 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 my openings?" I, I you know I think there there are a number of them that I can talk about. Um, you know, we are looking for um, you know on the on the internal development. So we, we have, you know, a sales operations organization. We have all these business platforms. We are looking for a director, of, you know, um, business platforms that, mm-hmm. that uh, will help us, you know, kind of get our, uh, uh, all of our systems kind of in, in order a little bit tighter, I guess is, is the best way to say that. Um, you know, we are looking for uh, a VP of it, mm-hmm. um, that's a that's a big position that we're looking to fill right away, um, but on the development side, you know, backend developers, uh, C plus uh, plus engineers, um, UI developers. Yeah, I was going to say user. They, I saw the user interface uh, positions get posted not too long ago, right? Yeah, we we we've we've actually done a great job. We've I think we have just a few more remaining uh, for the UI developers. Um, but the the challenges are a little bit harder on the on the back end developers and C mm-hmm. and C plus plus engineers, um, even QA developers. Um, now we're a little bit unique in that our QA developers um, have to be highly um, proficient at Unix and Linux and scripting. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times you see QA develop or, uh, anal- you know QA analysts or engineers out there and they're they have the automated test tools. Um, that's not really what we're looking for. You know, we're almost looking for network engineers that want to do uh, <laughs> that want to do QA type work on our products. Mm. So, but there are quite a few uh, openings across the board here at Tenable, and that and that's what makes it exciting is is that every single department is essentially hiring here, mm. from from engineering to sales to marketing to operations to finance to HR, um, and that's global too. So pre-sales, sales, um, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. So you don't necessarily – so I don't want to put people off to applying. Let's say, yeah. you, you know, I, I like what Tenable is doing. I want to come, you know, look at the jobs they have. You know, maybe I'll put my resume in. I don't quite know which position. And you can help those people navigate, right? Absolutely. So you can do it two different ways. And, and we, we, we utilize a, an, an applicant tracking system uh, called a job bite. Right, so Jobvite hosts all of our open positions, and you as an individual can go in and 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 apply for any one of those particular jobs. But what about I'm the, I'm the person that looks out there and I don't I don't see um, an opening that matches my qualifications. Okay, that's fine. What you can do is join our talent community. Um, there's a there's an icon on our website that you can go check. It, it just says join our talent community. You put your information in there. You can even upload your resume. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, because you know many times, you know what's what's available today isn't tomorrow, but it may be one or two weeks or one or two months down the road. Right. So when the recruiters are actively searching our database for you know candidates with a certain skill or expertise, you may be in there, and we may give you a call and say, hey, you you joined our talent community. Love to chat with you about this opportunity. Sometimes and sometimes, sometimes reading the job description, it's tough to 
understand exactly what that means. You have to just talk to someone about it and say, oh, yeah. no, yeah, I can do that. Because different companies call it different positions, different things. And, sure. you know, there's, I, I think it's, it's nicer to talk to someone. So, right. you know, my, I encourage people, if you're interested in coming to work for Tenable and making a career change, uh, to go ahead and submit your resume. Um, you just never know. I've seen, yeah, you know, there's, I, there's, I, I, fringe cases, right. but I've seen people get hired and, you know, we didn't necessarily have uh, an open position that they were looking for. But like you said, they got in the talent community. And we're like, no, come, go hire that person, you know. And, and even if you didn't want to join our, our talent community, you had a general question about a specific requisition. There's, you know, there's recruiting at tenable.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that's a that's an email address that's on our website. It's on it's on our, our careers pages um, that you can sub, sub, you know submit any type of inquiry that you want. Just want to understand. Hey, can you tell me a little bit more about this position? I'm not sure if I want to apply, but can you tell me a little bit more about it? Goes into a, a, you know basically comes to me, and I'll either respond or one of the other recruiters responds. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah. Sean, thank you so much for uh, appearing on Security Weekly. Um, we got a little bit of time left, so I'm yeah. going to ask you the five questions. Okay, five questions. Are you ready? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? Three. You can. And you know what, Sean? You can feel free to use these on some of your interviews. I think this would be All good. Right. All right, you ready? Three words to describe yourself. Oh boy, uh, passionate, intense. Stubborn. <laughs> if you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? Oh, boy. What's that cool... Uh, if it's cool. Um, in, uh, oh, my God. The movie where... Um, oh, my goodness. I'll just say a gun. <laughs> <laughs> that, was the fun, that was the funniest nah, answer ever. That's cool with the Dungeon State gun. No country for old men? Yeah, the, the country. Oh, the, the, uh, that's the, 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 the thing that they use to kill cattle with. Yeah, what, what the heck is that? It's uh, sort of a gun, right? It's yeah, gun? it's like a. Yeah, I, I know exactly the thing you're. It's you're, air or something. Yeah, and it's that got a piston crazy. that comes out of the front of it. Yeah, that was the craziest thing. It was an incredible movie, too. Yes. Larry, Larry uses it at home in his livestock. <laughs> I do. I do. Uh, and, you, and my door locks. Yes. <laughs> if you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? Oh, title would be Me, Myself, and I. <laughs> in the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? <laughs> oh, I'll say first. <laughs> choose two celebrities to use be that your one parents your, yeah, use that one on your interviews <laughs> <laughs> like I said you're feel free to use any of these on your interviews <laughs> feel free I don't even know what that is <laughs> but he went first but you went first lot, that's exactly a, the point says a lot about a person <laughs> <coughs> sorry Sean so choose two celebrities to be your parents um, Helen Hayes Okay. And celebrity. Me Googles Helen Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> We're just like, yeah, great choice. No idea who that is. No idea who that is. And uh, all right, all right. Boy, uh, first Ronald lady, Reagan. first lady of the American theater. Wow, two actors, <clears throat> an actor and an actress. Very nice. See, now we get to psychoanalyze you, Sean. My mom's name is Helen Hayes too. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> Sean, thank you very much for appearing on Security Weekly. Again, securityweekly.com forward slash tenable jobs. Make sure you go there, apply for a job. If you are looking to make a career change of any kind, uh, you may get to talk to Sean. Imagine that. Yeah, I welcome it. It'd be, it'd be fantastic to Excellent. reach uh, anyone. <laughs> Thanks so much, Sean. You bet. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. <clears throat> With that, we're going to take a short break. Come back. And talk about our stories for the week. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Woo!